Hello, in this presentation I will talk about the main criteria for selecting an industrial robot. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to know what are the main criteria to select an industrial robot being, in this case, the application one of the most important ones, because it will determine the type of robot to select. On the other hand, we have other criteria such as payload, number of axes, work area, accuracy, precision, jet limits, we will see that. In order to select the robot, I'm showing here actually the main criteria that will allow us to reduce the number of options in order to select the most appropriate robot for you. So, one of the main criteria, as I said, uh, is uh, in this case the application uh, where, for, where the robot is going to be used because it will mainly affect to the type of robot to use. Then we will use uh, other criteria such as payload, the number of axes, the work area, the robot accuracy and uh, precision, as well as the joint limits, but all these criteria will help us to reduce uh, the number of options to a few robots, but in the end, the final decision will probably depend on other criteria such as the price, and this is something I will mention at the end of the presentation. So, uh, the application will basically determine the type of robot to select, since some robots are more suitable for some applications than others. Classic robot manipulators are suitable for applications such as manipulation, welding, painting, among others. Uh, this is due to their great flexibility and their dexterousness to load and unload materials. The Scarabo robots are suitable in assembly applications with a lower cost than the previous ones, and also with a reasonable good work area. Cartesian robots are uh, very appropriate in applications requiring a high payload capacity, while on the other hand, Delta robots are ideal in industries such as pharmaceutical, electronics and food industries, due to their great precision and speed. And finally, in uh, applications where the robot has to work within or with humans, then collaborative robots are our best option. The payload of a robot defines the maximum capacity to carry a load. The actual maximum weight of the load will depend mainly on the distance to the robot flange, since the important thing, in the end, is the maximum torque that the robot is capable of to generate. In this case, the weight of the tool and any other accessory must be also taken into account. Robots with the highest or with, with or the robots with the highest payload are Cartesian robots, then we have manipulator and collective robots, and finally with a significantly lower workload we have a discarded robot, and also delta robots. The number of uh, axes of a robot will mainly affect to other criteria such as the work area and price, however I think it is important to differentiate between robots that have three or four axes, such as program robots or Scala or Delta robots. Um, these robots uh, are in general, uh, or they have a smaller workspace than the manipulator or collective robots, which generally they have six or seven axes. The number of axes will not uh, affect uh, to the work area, uh, but also to the, the uh, will affect sorry to the, the work area, but uh, also will affect to the thoroughness of uh, the task to be performed. So that means that the robot will be more dexterous to uh, achieve or the same task with multiple configurations while let's say avoiding joint limits or obstacles. Here I show a typical work area um, of the most common or the typical robot types. The work area is very important uh, to help us to understand which robot to select. The larger the work area, the greater number of applications that the robot can be used. Uh, manipulated robots have a typical work area like the one shown here on the top left figure. Um, being able to work behind the robot, while in, for instance, parallelogram robots, they have a smaller work area for similar dimensions. Delta robots, they typically have the work area as shown here on the, on the top right figure, like 3D parabola, while Cartesian robots have a work area which is basically a cube, and as you can see they are very simple, and uh, then we have <coughs> Scala robots that 
they can uh, they have a work uh, area very similar as the manipulator ones but uh, in this case in the XY plane. And finally uh, we have uh, if, the, or we, if we uh, attach uh, the robot to a conveyor belt then we can extend the work area as you can see here in the bottom right image. Accuracy and precision are two different concepts and they must be considered when selecting a robot. Industrial robots are usually precise and accurate, or so they say, but these terms are relative to the accuracy and precision required by the application. If a robot is not precise, the positions reached will be different one from each other uh, to, uh, to, to the one param. While if the robot is not accurate, each time it tries to reach the same position, it will actually appear as if it is some kind of noise associated with such accuracy. Joint limits are another important criterion to consider. Uh, joint position limits directly affect to the robot work area, but in addition to the position limits, we must also consider uh, maximum joint speed limits uh, that will generally uh, def be defined by for each of the axes. They might be different. And in addition to that, we uh, to that we have also acceleration limits that will affect to the time that the robot uh, takes in order to reach the maximum speed. Well, once we have uh, considered all these previous criteria, they will significantly reduce the number of options. And, but then the, the criteria I, I, I list here, this, this is when they come into play and this is when they will help us to take the final decision. Obviously, the price of the robot is one very important aspect to consider, as well as the maintenance, um, but also the ability to communicate with other machines such as PLCs or the software use. The weight of the robot in some applications might be very important, especially if you mount it on a rail. And also the IP protection level, the maybe some environment requires a specific IP protection level, so that's also an important criteria. But in the end, uh, uh, to be, uh, the manufacturer uh, could be the final decision, because in most cases we prefer to keep the same brand as we have in our current factory, than introducing new brands. Well, in this presentation, I've mentioned the most important criteria for selecting industrial robots. Thank you very much.